Welcome to the Web Basics series. Today I'll be talking about domains, name servers, DNS records, and hosting. This video is brought to you by Anfira Web Design and Development. Let's go ahead and get started. This video is for business owners who are trying to understand their web presence, agencies who need to deal with developers and don't always understand all of that developer speak, and just generally anyone who doesn't understand what domains, name servers, DNS records, and hosting are. During this video, I'm going to be simplifying and skipping a lot of the technical stuff. That means that I will gloss over a number of topics and not get into the details. So let's pretend that you have a physical business. You have people who arrive at your business. When they arrive at your business, you have someone who gives them directions. In order to give out those directions, this person has to have a list of directions. And then once the people have arrived, they've gone to the person, the person has checked the list, this person then gives some directions and they know where to go. Some examples are visitors. Visitors might be directed to one location at your business, whereas the mail truck might be, delivered, might be directed to deliver mail to a different location within the business. So now how this translates to the web. So instead of having a physical business, you have a web presence. Now, just like your physical business, there's an address, except instead of people arriving, we have computers sending requests. Just like you had a person who gave out directions, instead of a person, we have something called a name server that gives out directions. And this name server has a list that it checks for where to direct all of the traffic. And this list is called a DNS record. And then finally, instead of a physical location within your business to direct people and traffic and mail to, it's going to have servers that receive web traffic, email, etc. So that address that people arrive at is called your domain. When someone sits down at a computer, they type in a URL or a domain. This domain is then sent via your computer as a request. So the most common requests that a domain receives are email requests, when someone sends an email to say info at your domain, or when someone sends a website request, they use a web browser to access your domain. In many ways, a domain on the internet functions a lot like a physical address. Traffic arrives at this address, just like a physical one. And just like a physical one, it can move. For example, a business used to be at one location and now it's moved to another location. Your, your business can be at one domain and then move to a new domain. It can change owners. The owner or the manager of the business can change and the owner or the manager of the website can change. And it can be sold, just like a real business. How do you get a domain on the internet? Well, just like a physical address, you have to go buy it from someone. And who you buy it from is called a registrar. There are a number of different registrars on the internet. Now, just like a physical address would have rent or taxes or other fees, a domain has a yearly fee. This fee is typically in the range of 10 to $20. It varies, but that's the typical range for most domains. And 
Just like a physical address, if you don't pay your rent or your taxes, you lose it. So you have to pay your yearly fee to keep your domain. Now, how do you actually get that domain at the registrar? First thing you have to do is you have to open an account at the registrar. Then you will find out if the domain is available. If the domain's available, you can buy it at any registrar. It doesn't matter. You could search for your domain at GoDaddy and then later decide to buy it at Namecheap. As long as the domain is available, it doesn't matter what registrar you go to, at least for most domains. When you want to actually purchase a domain at a particular registrar, you must have an account with that registrar. Accounts are normally free. You pay for the actual domain. You can prepay for one year or five years or 10 years or more, but you just have to make sure that the yearly fee is paid. Since you have an account at this registrar, you can have multiple addresses. Just like if you went to the post office and got a post office box, you don't have to buy just one box, you could buy five different boxes. With your registrar account, you can buy five different domains. Now, whoever actually has the account at the registrar is the person who controls the domain and therefore they are the real owner of it. If you can't access the registrar account then you can't make any changes to the domain and only the person who actually can access the registrar account can actually make any changes. Some of the common changes are the publicly available information. When you make a domain, when you buy a domain, you can enter public information as to who this business is for. Now that information does not necessarily have anything to do with the account holder's information. So again, just because you publicly can see that your name is listed on a domain doesn't mean you actually own it. Only the person who has the registrar account for that domain actually owns it. So the key takeaway is that if someone has purchased the domain on your behalf and they have it in their registrar account, they are the ones who actually own and control it. So. Do you actually have a registrar account that you can log into and access and see your domains or not? If you don't have an account, if you can't log in and see your domains at the registrar, then someone else owns your domain. And unfortunately, this is a very, very common situation. Many people don't find out until much later that they never owned their domain. So now getting back to our web presence. So we have covered that your domain is what computers request. Now let's get on to our name servers. Our name servers are going to give out directions just like a greeter would at a physical address. So your name server tells the internet traffic where to go. The faster your name server can respond to tell that in internet traffic where to go, the faster the traffic gets there. Just like if you have a greeter and they have, they're very slow at reading through their list and giving out directions, then people get into your business much slower. Whereas if you have someone who can very quickly direct, then business gets in much faster. If your name server is ever offline, then no one can access your domain. That means no email, no website, 
no nothing. If your name server goes offline, that's it. No one can access you. Now on to the records that the name server uses to give out those directions. So all of the DNS records for telling traffic where to go is stored at your name server. Your name server uses these records, reads them off, and directs traffic. Whoever has access to your name servers can change how the traffic is routed. Therefore, you may need to give a web developer access at some point to your name servers so that they can route traffic for you, as editing these DNS records can be a little confusing and complicated. If you change service providers, for example, if you had your email handled by one company and now it will be handled by a new company, then your DNS records must be updated so that the internet can send your email to the correct location. Changes to your DNS records can take time. To get into a little more detail, not complete detail, but a little bit more. What happens is your computer requests a domain. Let's say they want to visit your website. They don't di connect directly to your name server. They actually connect to intermediate servers all over the world that then go out and contact your name server. What happens is these intermediate servers will remember or cache the data so that they don't have to contact your name server every single time. So what happens is they will remember data for a little while, up to usually 24 hours. So your domain may contact the intermediate server and get data that's up to 24 hours old. This is what's known as propagation delay. It's how often these intermediate servers get updates from your actual name servers that hold your DNS records. All right, we've now covered that your domain is at a registrar. Your domain has name servers, which give out directions. Your DNS are the directions, and now we followed the, the directions to actual hosting servers, which receive your web traffic, your email, etc. So hosting is the servers that store, send, and receive data. Your DNS records tell the traffic which server to go to. And they can tell different types of traffic to access different types of servers. So your email traffic can be routed to one server while your web traffic gets routed to another server. Hosting is these actual servers. And you can have many different hosting companies to handle the different types of traffic. For example, you could be using Google's G Suite to host your email while you could be using WP Engine to host your website. In this case, both Google and WP Engine are your host. What they do is they host different things on different servers. So now we've covered that your domain to your name server, to your DNS records, to actual servers that have your data. To recap, the domain is the address that gets requested. Domains are purchased from registrars and have yearly fees. If you don't pay the fee, you lose the domain. Whoever is the account holder at the registrar is the real owner of the domain and actually can control it. At the registrar, you have a name server set up. This name server 
tells traffic where to go. The name server uses DNS records to actually determine where all the different types of traffic go. And finally, the traffic lands at a hosting server to handle your website, your email, etc. Here's an example using accessing a website. Again, this is somewhat simplified. You type a domain name into a web browser. The web browser connects to the internet and asks your name server where to go. Your name server checks your DNS records and sends it to a hosting server. And now the hosting server and your web browser can communicate. If you are sending an email, you compose an email and press send. Whatever email tool you are using, whether it be a browser, a desktop client, an app on your phone, whatever type of email tool you are using, packages up that email and goes out to the internet and asks the name server, the domain that you're sending it to, where, where the email should go. The name server reads the DNS records, and directs the email to an email server at your email hosting company. The email server then receives the message and processes it for delivery to the recipient. So if your recipient, say, checks their email every hour or so, it'll take about an hour or so to actually get to the human being because that's the human being delay. So it's very important to have reliable services for all of these things. For example, if your name server is down, no one can access anything about your domain. No email, no website, nothing. If the actual host for your website or your email goes down, then no one can access that particular service. This means if your website host goes down, People may still be able to access your email, even though your web host is down because they're handled by different servers. There are some companies out there who specialize in certain parts of this. I mentioned uh, G Suite earlier. G Suite doesn't handle most websites. They specialize in handling your applications, your email. I also mentioned WP Engine. WP Engine specializes in only hosting WordPress websites. That's all they do. For everything else, they tell you go, go talk to someone else. That's not what they specialize in. In general, if you want a higher quality service, you typically need to find specialists for those particular services. Now, there are some companies who act as a jack of all trades. Typically, they're not a master of any of them. An example of this is GoDaddy. They will offer you everything under one roof, but the quality that you get is typically much lower than what you will get from a specialist. Thank you for watching. We have more videos available at our YouTube channel, and you can also visit our blog for articles and tutorials.